What's up guys, Gameplay Intensifies here. If you like this video, make sure you drop that like and hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to me. Thank you. What's up boys, Gameplay Intensifies is back bringing you another video. I am amazed, I am founded and extremely humble for, by the amount of views and the amount of support I got on my last review video regarding the level 30 season 1 for FIFA 21. I hope it helped you guys a lot with uh, who to choose there. I believe Sabitzer was the strongest player out of that mainly because of his work rate and just the overall prowess of a player but the fact that you guys liked it so much to watch it so many times and to uh, subscribe to the channel means a lot but season two here is now here so let's go ahead and hop in show you guys around season kind of looks interesting i hope i'm not too late dropping this video because i know a lot of you diehard fifa fans play six seven hours a day and you're out there constantly but we got some guys we got three guys all 82 overall bunch of names i cannot pronounce so i'm not even going to try so if you can do the phonetic spelling of these players down in the comments section below, I will take your advice and I will try to pronounce them. But as of right now, I'm not going to get into it. But here we go. We got the 82 overall center mid from the Italian league. We got a uh, 82 overall right mid from the Bundesliga. And we have an 82 overall uh, center back from the Spanish league now they did level 15 and level 30 rewards this time so that is going to be a blast make sure you grind this season out get to where you want to be to be successful in this game and to have a have a blast so let's go ahead hop into the first player review video of the season 2 level 15 rewards we're going to start off with the center mid out of the Italian league he's got a high high work rate he's got the preferred right foot He's got three-star skill moves, three-star weak foot. Now, his baseline stats, 88 pace, 70 shot, 80 pass, 84 dribbling, 73 defense, 86 physicality. That's pretty solid all around. Very similar to what we saw with Sabitzer, except for the skill moves and weak foot are one star less, which I do not like to see. His height as a center mid, 5'11", would be a little bit more acceptable if his shot was better. Um, however, his shot being so low at 5'11", it's tough to play him at a cam roll because you can't just drop it down and have an easy go-to-go -go shot with the cam because he won't make those 20-yard shots. However, going to, into his overall detail stats, you got things that stick out to me are stamina, strength, you got agility. Those three stats, along with his acceleration and sprint, sprint speed, with how the game goes overall nowadays, with people taking their strikers and pushing them back into the midfield, those five stats that I just pointed out are amazing for a high, high work rate center mid because this man will be all over the field. Some things that very disappoint me about this card is his defensive awareness, his slide tackling, and just his overall finishing. I mean, if this guy's in the box, you cannot rely on him for putting the ball in the back of the net, nor can you really rely on him playing a Nagolo Kante type role where he will always be in the right defensive place and he can do those uh, goal-saving slide tackles that many of us want to do when it's a one-on-one -on -one type situation. This guy will probably lead to a red card rather than taking the ball which we never want to see. As for player traits, he's got none. That hurts him. But overall, the physicality and the pace on this center mid card from the Italian league is what stands him out from the crowd. Now, let's move on to the right mid. Like I said, I'm not pronouncing any of these names. I don't want to disappoint anyone. You can do them phonetically in the chat below. I will try and learn them. But for now, I'm not going to touch him. <laughs> uh, now, the right mid, South Korean, out of the Bundesliga. He's a 91 pace, 87 dribbling, and he's got 77 pass. All right. He's got medium, medium work rate, preferred right foot, which you want on the right mid. And then he got four-star skill moves with a four-star weak foot. That's very nice. What I like about this car, too, 
is that he's from South Korea in the Bundesliga. You know who that pairs with? That's Stryker, who plays for RB Leipzig. Is 77 overall, 94 pace, had a specialty card, first season in FIFA. Pairs very nicely with this, and this actually allows you to create a front three of full South Korean players. Pause. Think about that. When's the last time you ever had that in FIFA? I don't think ever. Going into his detailed stats, you have things that stick out to me is his acceleration at 96. 96, that's absurd. You got agility and balance at 96 and 97. Those are the three that really make me look at this card in the sense that if his dribbling maybe was five higher, his ball control was maybe five higher, this guy would be better than Neymar Jr. on the ball, dribbling the ball. Now, does he have the shot like Neymar? Does he have the sprint speed like Neymar? Does he have the stamina like Neymar? No. However, he has that ball control in those tight spaces that if you're good enough with your skill moves or the rollovers and the Maradonas, this man might be a very fun card to play with. Things that disappoint me about him, his long shots, his long pass, and his curve, all terrible. Plus, his strength on the ball is very poor. So, if you get him into a situation where you can kind of work all around the 20-yard pen area where you can potentially draw a penalty, that's where you want him. Trait he has, technical dribbler. That is the exact trait you need on this card, or else it would not be a very good card. Now, going along with that 96 agility, that 97 balance, I mean, to have technical dribbler, you're just talking, you're looking for trouble. You're just waiting to have so much fun in this game with this card right here. This is what gets me excited with FIFA. The fact that you can have a full front three of South Korean players and them all be technically dribble, tr dribblers, technical dribblers. That's amazing. Now, the center back out of the Spanish league. This man is 5'11". He's medium high work rates, right preferred foot, two star, two star. And he's got 82 pace at center back. Keep that in mind. He's got 81 defense and he's got 90 physicality. The rest of the three other base stats, I don't really look at it as a center back. Now you might ask, dribbling might play a large role in it, but I don't look at those. Those are not the main ones you need in a center back. You need the pace, the defense, and the physicality. Looking at some stats, his strength, his aggression and his jumping all stand out. You might say he's only 5'11 at center back and I want at least a 6'2 guy, but jumping at 88 overall, that man will be able to jump as if he was 6'6. Okay? Think that in mind. Now, many people love to use the pairing of Diago Carlos, comparing him to Gomez in the Premier League, as well as using Sergio Ramos on the back front. Now, this guy is better than Diago Carlos. Look up the stats. His baseline stats, the 82 pace, the defense, and the physicality are better than Diogo Carlos. However, his shot, passing, and dribbling is worse than him. I think this guy is a steal for the type of situation you have because I think this guy is a long-term card. Some downsides to him is just his long pass is atrocious. Uh, anything like his short pass and then just his ball control, they're all atrocious. If this guy has the ball, do not try to do anything fancy with him because he will turn the ball over. As for the player traits, he has none. That hurts him. That goes back to the right man in the Bundesliga, the only player having the player trait technical dribbler. That is huge. Out of all three players, he's the only one with one trait. So now, boys, you have the center back in the Spanish league, you have the right man in the Bundesliga, and you have the center mid in the Italian league. Who to choose? That's the main question, right? I think you would have a lot of fun with the right mid in the Bundesliga, okay? I don't think the center mid in the Italian league will be beneficial. I cut him out completely. The center back and the right mid are the two that I want to focus on. The right mid is going to be extremely fun in this game to play with. I think you'll get a lot of entertainment from him. However, he's not your long-term character. If you have a Bundesliga team, it'd be fun to play with. Now, for the center back, he's my pick of choice. He's a long-term character. He'll, 
probably be in the game in your squad for maybe about three months unless you get pack lucky um, and he'll be agile on that back line with Sergio Ramos who will make up for his height differential now the right mid like I said he's South Korean so you can have a full-on South Korean front three that is amazing I love that that's awesome uh, I like rooting for the smaller nations when they get really good players. I'm from the United States, so we're not good at soccer, but we're getting there. <laughs> so, but with the center back, the Spanish league center back, this man is a steal for the level 15 rewards. He's better than Diego Carlos. He's almost better. If not, he's stronger than the Gomez card. He doesn't have as good defense, and he's I think he's one pace lower, but he's almost as good as the Gomez Inform card. But this guy is the steal. This is who you should pick. If you like this video, stay tuned for the in-depth play reviews. I'll catch you guys on the next ones on the flippity flip. Peace.